Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, Ten Days Delay. This is the story of a thrilling chase across country as three American soldiers help a young lady in distress. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Here's an important message for young men who are high school graduates. Never before in history has there been such a need and such an opportunity to serve your country and yourself as there is today in the United States Army. If you're qualified, there are careers open for you in radio, radar, communications, and many, many other fields. So pay a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station without delay and get full details. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, 10 Days Delay. Tokyo. <laughs> Fujiyama, here I come. Hey, let me read those orders again, huh? Yeah. Uh, to report the camp stoneman for transshipment to the Far Eastern Command. And enlisted, enlisted men authorized 10, ten days delay en route. The French really have a word for it, en route. What are you going to do, Pete? Oh, I'm going to have myself a ball. Hey, Charlie boy, we got it. Ten days with nothing to do. That's well, Pete. You're going home, I guess. You huh? bet. I know the cutest little chick that lives right outside of Topeka. Boy, there's no place like home. Hey, Pete, knock it off. What's huh? the matter? What'd I say? Oh, Charlie. Gee, I'm sorry. I forgot about your folks. Oh, it's okay, Pete. I don't expect anyone to remember. Look, Charlie, I've got a wonderful idea. Why don't you come home with me? We could see a ball game, and I'm sure I could get you a date or two. That sounds swell, Pete, but thanks. No, I couldn't. Well, what are you going to do, Charlie? Oh, take a good look at this country, I guess. Get on a bus and roll right across the states. All of them. Ten days, I should cut a pretty big slice of the U.S. Gee, that's something I've always wanted to do, you know, see this country? Me too. Oh, how about it? Why don't you come along, both of you? Are you kidding? My papa would never forgive me if I didn't come home, at least to say hello. Look, Charlie, I got a better idea. Why don't you come home with me? Hey, wait a minute. I asked him first. Why not? Why not what? Huh? It's not as crazy as it might sound. Pete, would it kill you not to see that chick in Topeka? Huh? Well, I don't know. But... And you, Jim, you were just home last month on leave. So? Well, let's do it all, the three of us. We've got 10 days to see America, from New York to San Francisco. How about it, guys? With six cents, a mile travel pay, a comfortable bus, 10 days delay? I don't know. Why not? I guess you're right. Why not? Last country bus, now loading. Platform 7, Port Jersey City, Hackettstown, Easton, Allentown, Altoona. Hey, where's Pittsburgh, Pete? The bus is leaving. He said he'd be here. Town, Call a hotel? A half hour ago, he'd already checked out. What do you think happened to him? Wish I knew. Toledo, well, come on, bus is loaded. We better get on. Yeah. Gary, tickets, please. Let me check your tickets, please. Okay, soldier. Let me take a look at those tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going all the way to Frisco, huh? That's right. We've got 10 days to make it in. Well, you better hold on to these with all those stopovers you've got in mind. All right, driver. Incidentally, uh, we were supposed to be traveling with another soldier. We'd like to leave our names with hey, information. Hey, hold it! Hold the box! Don't leave without me! Here he comes now. Holy mackerel. I thought, I, I thought I'd never make Where it. Where you been? Well, I went in to have my uniform pressed, see? And, and the tailor forgot to scorch my pants. Here, look. <laughs> well, 
It's the only pair of dress pants I've got. Oh, come on. We said we'd travel light. On, let's get on the bus. I can tell this is going to be some trip. <laughs> You sit down. You're driving everyone crazy pacing up and down the aisle that way. Oh, I get tired of sitting. You better get used to it. We've got a long ride ahead of us. Uh, you see anything interesting on the bus? Why, yeah. She just got on at the last stop. Yeah, I knew there was a reason for all those tours to the front of the bus. How you doing? Not so hot. She's got a guy sitting with her. Hey, we're pulling up to a stop. We'll make a ten-minute rest stop. Sandwiches and coffee are available on the terminal. Yeah, come on, let's go. I'd like to get something to eat before it crowds up too much, huh? Well, here's my chance to cut in on this guy. Better take it easy. Petey could be your husband. No, no, I don't think so. She wasn't wearing a wedding band. Hey, our boy is really observant. Sure. You don't get a chance like this every day. Hey, there are three seats over next to her. Come on. I'll introduce you. Wait a second, wait a second. She's getting up. Something's wrong. Come on, I'm going to find out. Anything wrong, miss? My purse... My purse is missing. Well, uh, how about that guy that was sitting next to you? I, I don't know him. He just struck up a conversation. I was being polite. Well, he must still be around here. Let me go check and see if I can find him, huh? Oh, would you please? All my money's in the purse. Hey, Jim, look in the bus again while you're at it. On the floor under the seat. Good as done. Here, miss, sit down. There's no reason to be upset. I'm sure he'll find it. Uh, would you like a cup of coffee? I have no money. Well, now, don't you worry about a thing. We're the best paid soldiers in the world. You're so nice, both of you. Uh, miss... The soldier just told me that you'd lost your purse. I had it on the seat next to me, and the next thing I knew, I, I was in here, and it was gone. That fellow sitting next to you is gone. I saw him hit you right up the road a piece, heading west. He said he was going to Chicago. Well, look, if he took it, he can't go very far. I'll call the state police, and they can set up a roadblock. You'll have your purse and your money back within an hour. You really think so? All right, what's your order, folks? A uh, coffee for all of us. Would you like anything else, miss? No, thank you. That'll be fine. Anyway, I suggest that you hold up here for an hour or two until you hear from them. Here? We're miles from the nearest town. Well, you won't have any trouble. You can always catch the next bus. I have no money and no ticket. How can I stay here? Well, it'll only be an hour or two. Well, I looked all through the bus. Couldn't find a thing. Well, miss, I guess you have no alternative. I can't stay. I was on my way to Seattle. That's my home. My dad's very ill. I, I just have to get home. Is there any reason why she couldn't ride the bus anyway? Then when the purse is found, it could be forwarded to Chicago. Oh, I guess that would be all right. I've already checked her ticket through, but well, what's the young lady going to do for her meals? Oh, uh, that's no problem. Oh, I couldn't. I just couldn't let you. Here's coffee. <laughs> is anything wrong with the coffee, miss? <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with the coffee. <laughs> Pete seems to be getting nowhere fast. Next time we stop, I'm going to tell him to lay off. That poor kid's really concerned about what's happening to her. She can't be listening to some character with smart remarks and fast conversation. Hey, that sounds like a little more than the normal amount of concern. You talked to her yet, Jim? Yeah, she's kind of nice. She's wonderful. Wonderful? I didn't realize things had progressed that far. Oh, don't be silly. She's studying to be an actress. She's not interested in men. They're all interested in men. Just takes the right man. Who knows? You could be it. <laughs> this would be a heck of a time to fall for a girl on a cross-country bus just nine days away from a trip to Tokyo. Oh, hold on a second. Here comes Pete. What's the matter, lover boy? Are you using the wrong kind of toothpaste? Ah, uh, she's a pill. All she keeps talking about is that lost purse. I give up. Hey, where, where are you going? I thought I'd go up and see how she was. Well, go ahead. You're not going to get anywhere with that cold tomato. What's his hurry? Uh, I, I think he's developed a sudden interest in the theater. Oh? Come on, sit down. Take a load off. You know, there's something strange about that girl. What do you mean, strange? Well, I don't know, but I've been thinking about all this. Losing her purse and her ticket, you know, all that stuff. Sounds a little too pat to me. I don't get it. Well, I've heard stories like this one. Confidence people who go around preying on innocent soldiers. <laughs> Look at you, you big lug. Well over six feet. You must tip the scale at 220. I can just picture her preying on you. Yeah, well, it could happen, you know. Yeah, I suppose it could. Yeah, 
I sit down? Please do. Take your friends a little mad at me. Who, Pete? Oh, Pete's all right when you get used to him. I'll bet you couldn't say anything mean about anybody if you tried. <laughs> you know, I don't even know your name. That's right. In all the confusion back there at the restaurant, where you know how it was. You still didn't tell me your name. It's Sally. Sally Mark. Hi, Sally. Hi. Well? Well, what? Now you have to tell me yours. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was looking at the end of your nose. My name's Charlie, Charlie Fisher. My two buddies are called Pete Walker and Jim Harlan. Pete's a tall uh, uh, wait one. Wait a minute, not so fast. Yeah? One thing at a time. You were talking about the end of my nose. It moves up and down when you talk. <laughs> Isn't it terrible? Could cut it off. I didn't mean to embarrass you. You, you. you didn't embarrass me. People have been telling me that since I was five. In Oregon? In Oregon. You're uh, not too worried about your purse, are you? I'm frantic. You don't show it. I just have to find it. My tickets, my money, all my identification. What do I do? I told you, the United States Army's at your service. Oh, that's silly. I, I can't continue depending on some boys I hardly know. Besides, you're getting off at Chicago. Well, I asked the driver, and he said this bus is only going to lay over for a couple of hours in Chicago before it goes on. I just decided maybe we'd better go on with it and pick up whatever loose time we have at the San Francisco end. When did you decide that? Just now. And anyway, you're going to have your purse by Chicago. You think so? You really think so? I don't care what you say. We're taking her with us. I think you're nuts. Now, this is one time I think Pete's right, Charlie. This is no time to be latching on to some tomato we don't even know. This is not some tomato. This is someone who's in trouble, real trouble. I don't think we'd be living up to the oath and obligation of these uniforms if we didn't help her. Boy, I've heard everything now. This phony dame has really got you stymied, hasn't she? All right, Pete, I've heard enough from you guys. Go ahead if you want. I'm staying. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. There's no reason to get sore. I'd just like to know what happened to all those big plans of yours. About all we're seeing of the U.S. is the inside of this bus, you know. Pete, old pal, would it kill you not to see that chick in Topeka? Oh, let's let him stay with her, Jim. He deserves it. Look, there's nothing I can do about it. I've already committed myself to Sally. Oh, it's Sally, is it? All right, mm -hmm. come on, guys. Come off. All right, we will. But you have to use a little good sense, too. Let's at least sit it out until we get to Chicago. Her purse will probably be there waiting for her, and she'll be on her way, and we'll be on ours, okay? Yeah, she'll be on her way, all right, with a wad of your dough. Just until Chicago, then. You with us, Pete? Just until Chicago. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Ten Days Delay. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. You know, it's a far cry from the twanging banjos and mandolins of the early 20s to the complex instrumentation of modern music of the 50s. And with such thinking in mind, I'd like to remind you, young gentlemen listening, that you don't want to let old ideas about army life give you a slanted version of the wonderful outfit your Uncle Sam is running these days. Now, for some years, every man in the United States Army has been a fellow who's specially welcomed and honored by any American citizen and by all American communities. As you realize, Army service is an important part of the life of many young men. Today's modern Army lets you select schooling of your choice, gives you a guarantee in writing that you will get that schooling and that all happens before you enlist. Today's Army tells you to pick your branch within the Army, then put you there. See what's in it for you in the Army right now. Learn at your nearest recruiting station downtown about starting off a career alongside big Americans in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Ten Days Delay. Country bus arriving on ramp six from New York had the 
Georgetown, Easton, Allentown, Altoona, Pittsburgh, Youngstown. All right, young lady, I'll check at the office, but I don't want to bring your hopes up too high. The dispatcher usually has any information of that sort ready for me when I check the passengers off the bus. Well, do what you can, will you, driver? We only have a couple of hours here. I know. Uh, what time are you scheduled to pull out again? Well, I usually have about a 12-hour layover. Well, let's go see what's in the office. I don't care what he says. I'm still going to stay on the bus to San Francisco. Will you try calling home? I would try, but Dad's in the hospital. Can't take a chance on calling him there. Well, aren't there any other relatives you can call? None. See, our, our home isn't in Seattle, it's in Yakima. You mean to tell me there's no one you can call? Look, Sally, don't worry about it. I've got a hunch everything's gonna work out all right. Charlie, I, I've been such a pest. Charlie, Charlie, that's him. What'd you say? The man sitting next to me on the bus, that's him there o over by the ticket window. Jim, go get the driver and the policeman quick. Okay. Well, aren't you gonna do anything? In a minute, I wanna play this safe. Hey, he's turning around, I, I think he sees us. Come on, Charlie, let's go get him. He sees us, he's... He's getting away. Stop that man. Stop him. Yes, ma'am, I've got his description. Please find him, officer. He can't be too far away. Well, don't worry, ma'am. We'll do the best we can. He left your ticket at the counter when he ran away. According to the ticket seller, he was trying to cash it in. Well, that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Oh, look, I'd best go call some of this information in so we can get working on it. Uh, how long are you planning on being in town? Uh, at least until tonight. We're all going to continue on the same bus, and he has a 12-hour layover. Uh-huh. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, here's a card with my office number on it. The desk sergeant there will be able to give you any information we have about what's happening on this case. Oh, thanks, officer. Well, what are we going to do? We got until 8 o'clock tonight to see Chicago. The first thing I'm going to do is find an army store and get me a new pair of pants. Yeah, I thought you were walking kind of funny. Something like that, uh, that artist that they made the movie about, you know, to lose the track. <laughs> yeah, I knew you could still laugh. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten. <laughs> Incidentally, I owe you an apology. Gee, I thought you were in cahoots with that guy who stole your purse. Oh, you're both so wonderful. I, I don't know what I'd have done without you. Come on, Pete. I'll help you buy those pants. Charlie, you uh, want to come with us? No, I think I'll wait around here. I'll tell you what we'll do. Favorite meeting place in Chicago is right under the clock at Marshall Fields on the corner of State and Randolph. We'll meet you there at noon, and we can all have lunch together, okay? Okay. 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 Then we're off to see the wizard. They're a good bunch of guys. Yes. You gonna stay around the bus terminal? I don't know. You mad at me? I don't know why I should be. Well, maybe you were angry because I let that guy get away. Oh, did you? I thought you were trying to stop him. I suppose those are the latest military tactics. All right, Sally, don't. We no longer attack the enemy. We surround him and give him plenty of room so he can get away. Sally, I yes, thought that... Yes, I'm sure your instructors must have taught you that. I can't believe that you're a coward. <laughs> Mighty sharp there, boy. You're not kidding, son. You know, you can tell a real soldier when you see one. Yeah, especially when he doesn't have to walk with his knees bent, covering up a hole in his pants. Hey, it's almost noon. We better be heading back towards Marshall Fields. You think the lovers have patched up the little quarrel? Oh, I'm sure of it. Yeah? You didn't see her look at him when that guy got away. I think she thinks he's chicken. What? Charlie, of all guys? Mm -hmm. Gee, I can remember in training camp, crossing that ravine... When he climbed out on that rope and held that guy there until they put a rescue net on. Yeah. He was always the first guy out when we had to crawl on our belly under that machine gun fire. Yeah. And that night of our first pass when that jerk in town tried to give him a rough time, remember? Mm. Boy, you'd never think a quiet guy like that could hit so fast and so hard. Well, maybe that's it, Pete, is being a quiet guy. He always has to think things out first. <laughs> Guys, over here. Hey, Charlie. Where's your girl? Don't be funny. I haven't seen her since early this morning. Of course, if true love never does run smooth. Hey, here she comes now. Hi, Sally. Hello, Jim. Pete. Charlie. 
Hello, Sally. I'm sorry, Charlie. I, I just didn't think. If I had, I wouldn't have said what I said. Oh, Sally. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, pardon us for living. Hey, 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 you're drawing a crowd. Right this way, folks. The main attraction of the afternoon featuring the love hey, scene of the century. I think we'd better get something neat, huh? Of all times to think of food. Well, for one, I agree. Walking around this town has given me quite an appetite. Uh, how about that place right across the street there? Looks good to me. Come on, Pete, let's go ahead. Let's wait for Sally. Come on, Pete, let's go ahead. Uh, oh! It's been a miserable morning. I went into the Art Institute and I sat there. I didn't see a single picture. I walked down by the lake and hated myself. I just shouldn't have said what I did. I just haven't been able to think straight. Dad's being sick like that and all. I had almost $500 in that purse. All my savings, I was going to pay Dad's hospital bill. When I saw that man get away, I was sick. It doesn't matter now, just as long as you're not mad at me. You're not a coward, Charlie. <laughs> Ordered yet? No, we're just sitting here drooling. A waitress just went by with some giant-sized hamburgers and all the trimmings. Oh, that sounds perfect. And a Coke. Same for me. Cashier says there's some phones in the basement. I, I think I'll call the detective and see if they found anything. Hey, that's a good idea. I almost forgot. Anything wrong, Sally? I need a dime for the phone. Well, here, lady, if the phone's busy, you can get yourself a free cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, I think I'm getting used to this arrangement. You're going to have a hard time getting rid of me. I'm back quick, princess. It gets lonely without you. Well, I hope you know how lucky you are. She's a wonderful girl. I'm even beginning to agree on that. It's no funny. I never thought it would happen like this. Well, it sneaks up on you. All of a sudden, it bats your brains in. Who knows when we may be smitten by Cupid's arrows? Oh, I'll knock it off. Well, here comes Sally. Charlie. Charlie, he's down in the basement. What? It's the same man. He's in a phone booth making a call. Hey, 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 hold it. Don't go off half-cocked like that. Well, he's not going to get away this time. Oh, Charlie, don't get hurt. Look, this is no time for hysterics or bravado. The important thing is to nail this guy. Jim's right. Okay, Jim, I'm with it again. Sally, is there an exit in the basement? Any way he could get out of there? Well, there are some doors down there into the restrooms. He, he couldn't get out of there. And one other door into the kitchen, I think. I, I could hear them rattling pots and pans. Okay, then, here's what I'll do. Sally, you go over to the cashier and get a policeman. Quick as you can. All right. Charlie, be careful. All right, now, Jim, you and Pete post yourselves at the head of the stairs. Just watch it, Charlie. He may have a gun. Come on, let's go. Stay back out of the way so he can't see as he comes up the stairs. I'm going down. It must be him. That's the door to the kitchen. All right, easy. Here he comes. Soldier. Ain't you got enough sense not to block? Hey, ain't you the same guy who was on the bus? You're darn right I am. What'd you do with Sally's money? What money? <coughs> All right, soldier, now just lie there. This gun's loaded, see, and I'm not afraid to use it. Now, where are your buddies? Find out for yourself! <coughs> there they go, into the kitchen. I'm right behind you. Hey. Stay off, Pete. He's doing fine. Got a boy, Charlie. Let him have it. Hey, he's got a gun. Watch out. Hey, not anymore. He hasn't. Here, put it in your pocket. Hey. Ooh, this hurts me more than it hurts him. All right. Had enough? Okay. Okay, soldier, I had enough. Hey, what do they feed you guys in the army? Let me take your tickets, please. Well, hi, yes, soldier. And you, young lady. Did you get everything all straightened out? Yes, we did. Well, we certainly did. 
Uh, you uh, haven't seen my two buddies, have you? Well, I haven't seen the tall one. The other guy's asleep in the bus. I guess I'd better leave his name with the internet. Hey, hold it! Uh-oh. Hold it, hold the bus! Don't leave without me! Here he comes now. Hold him, Mac. I thought I'd never make it. Where you been? Well, I went for a walk down Michigan Boulevard, and I met this girl with a little dog. See? Well, I was doing fine. All of a sudden, that darn dog up and bit me. Here, look. Another pair of hands. Come on, everybody. You better get aboard. Well, your dad? Uh huh. He thinks maybe he'll be out of the hospital by Friday, and if everything's all right, he'll meet us in Frisco on Sunday. He wants to meet you. He doesn't think you're foolish to travel all the way out to the coast for nothing. I've got my ticket. And besides, I'm not traveling out to the coast for nothing. You're not? No. I've got ten days' delay, and I'm going to get on a bus and cut me a big slice of the U.S. Uh, you've been talking to Jim again. <laughs> not such a bad idea, you know, being the U.S. Especially with such desirable traveling companions. You will wait, won't you, Sally? Of course not. I'll throw myself over one of those Japanese lover's leaves. <laughs> Charlie. It won't be long, darling. It won't be long. Oh, hey. Hey, uh, are we in St. Louis yet? <laughs> no, sleepyhead. We just pulled out. <sighs> Golly. You know, I, I, I can't figure out whether this has turned out to be the longest ten days ever invented by man or the shortest. Well, whatever the case, it has certainly been the most wonderful... <laughs> Attention high school graduates, get on the Freedom Team today by volunteering for enlistment in the United States Army. You can help America save the peace and save freedom too by enlisting today. Full details at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>